All right. Well, welcome again, everyone, for our uh, 1 p.m. We're starting just slightly late, so my apologies. Our trivia ran over time just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this session is Tips and Tricks for Success in Lessons with Julianne Morgan from University of Dayton. Uh, she is the academic engagement lead there, and uh, in, in addition to training faculty on how to be how to best use Sakai at their institution, which they call Isidore at, at UD, um, she also assists with the design and testing of new features. So um, she is going to be uh, taking us through some of her favorite tips and tricks for lessons. Um, please do remember to stay muted, and if you have questions, put them into the chat, and we'll get Julianne to answer them toward the end of the session. So take it away, Julianne. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so I'm going to, I didn't make a uh, presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, but instead I made a little Google Doc. So I'm posting that link to the Google Doc um, into the chat. It's also available in the session resources Google Drive folder that Wilma has made. So that's available to you as well. I may add more to this later, depending on how this conversation goes. Um, and then there was one thing that I didn't get to add that uh, I will add after the fact. Um, but maybe we'll, it, it's basically just meant to be an async kind of version of what I'm going to talk about today, which is just tips and tricks for designing courses um, in the lessons tool in Sakai. And do pardon me if I do say Isidore instead of Sakai, because we do call it Isidore here, which is the patron saint of learning and computers and the internet and technology. Who knew that there was internet back when there were uh, St. Isidore was alive in the 1200s, but hey, there you go. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here and get situated. Um, I will ask you though, if you, you can type questions in the chat, I'll try to keep my eyes on that because I'd like to answer those questions live as I can. Um, but I might also invite you if you have a question that I'm not understanding, I might invite you to unmute yourself so you can ask your question um, because I do want this to be an engaging session where I can actually demo these things to you, um, especially since I might even demo a little bit of, of code. So that can be intimidating for some folks. Um, so can someone just make sure or let me know if they are seeing my screen? Can I don't know, Wilma, can you say that? Yes, you're seeing yes, my I'm lesson screen. Okay, good. great. Thank you so much. So I'm going to start by um, just going over something that I'm sure many of you do already know about and are aware of. So I apologize if this is a repetition for you, but I work with many instructors who um, aren't aware of this, which is when you're getting started with the lessons tool, um, it's a little bit intimidating on how to get started. You know, it's really nice to see examples from other professors if you can, but just in terms of what do I even do when I get to this page? And our page does look probably a little bit different than the pages you have on your version of Sakai. We just stylize things a little bit differently. Um, we made these actual links rather than a picture. So I can actually click on this and add content. Um, but we do have this option to add layout. And I think that gets overlooked a lot of the time. Um, and that's a great place to get started when you're first using lessons for the first time. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, we like the styling here too. Um, it's nice that it's interactive, so I can actually click on this to add the layout. Um, and this can also be a little bit confusing if you're not sure what you're, what if you've never used these layouts before. But what I tell folks is the best way to kind of get started is click on the page layouts option, and you have a bunch of different options. But there's descriptions if you just read, and there's there's some there's screenshots, so you'll know what you're doing a little bit. Um, but this is going to give you a, a page for it's just making a, a page for weeks of the semester or modules. Um, it gives lets you pick a title essentially. So I can say I want the pages all to be called week, for instance, and I'm just going to leave it like that. And then I'm, I'm going to change the button color if I want to. This is you know one of the beautiful features of Sakai is that you get some some color options. So I like the navy a lot. And let's say I've got um, 12 weeks in my semester, so I'm gonna choose 12. And so I'll say add layout. And just like magic, I now have a lessons page that has a sub page for now for each week of the semester, which is awesome. It saves me a lot of clicks versus having to manually go to plus add sub page, type it in, plus add sub page, type it in. Um, so th there's nothing in these pages, but it gives me a starting point. So I always like to tell folks about that if they're just getting started with a new site, new course um, for the first time. And then once you're 
you have these pages, what do you do with them? You're stuck in the same spot, right? You don't know what to do once you have your week one. You could just start dumping files into it. But there are also uh, layouts that you can use for the what we call the interior page. So I'm going to again, again go to this add layout um, either here or up here at the top. So I'm going to click it here. And I'm going to say page layouts, and I'm going to choose the option for interior layout um, with resources section. And again, you can see a little bit of a picture of what that's going to look like. So I'll click on preview image. So it's going to give me an overview um, and with template text. That's something that I'm always having to tell my instructors, switch out the template text. Don't just leave the brackets there. Um, a spot to add some tasks, a checklist, important dates, and then a spot to upload some resources. Uh, and then you also have, if you don't want to go with that option, you can go into your layout with task sections. So very similar. Here's the preview image, um, some text on the overview, and the learning outcomes you can add, a checklist. But now I can do these expandable and collapsible sections for all the tasks I want the students to complete for that module. So in here, I get to choose how many tasks I have. Now for me, even as an instructional designer, I oftentimes don't know how many tasks I'm going to end up with. So sometimes it's a guess. I think maybe there's gonna be five tasks for this module. So I'll choose five. I can choose my color scheme here if I want to. So I'm gonna go with Navy again. And I can also set whether I want that task section to be collapsible or not, to start in that collapse format. And I typically like to do that. So I'm gonna choose that option. Um, and then I also like to have the section start close. So I'm gonna choose that as well. And I'll press add layout. And now like magic, I have my overview, my learning outcomes and my task sections although they didn't start close, um, but that's okay. I can close them later. And also one thing I like to do is I, maybe it's, I bet it's just because I need to refresh the page. Let me try refreshing. No, okay, They're, they still need to be set to close. Um, I know there's differing opinions. I know a lot of other Sakai schools never close the tasks and that's fine. We, we typically do, and it's not been a problem with our students. They understand to how to open and, cl and collapse these sections. Um, but one thing I also like to do when I'm working on a specific task section is I like to have them all close but keep the one that I'm working on. I set that to open since it's just a quick toggle. I set this to, you know, task three. I'm going to set it to open so that I can work on that and not have to continually open it up every single time I'm coming to that page. Again, that's a, it's a silly little trick, um, but it does save me a lot of time because a lot, you know, as anyone who works in lessons know, there's a lot of times the page is refreshing. And so just saving that one click does actually help if I know I'm going to be having to open these tasks up time and time and time again. So um, now you do have the hard part of having to come up with the content for your tasks. So that's not something that we can templatize, unfortunately, not yet at least. Although go to the chat GPT session later and maybe you'll you know find out how to make some content for these tasks. But um, you at least have a framework with which to get started. So adding the layouts, um, it's a great option. If you want to add yet another task to this list, uh, there is, this is probably the one I actually use the most in the layouts. Um, I go, it's just actually a section layout because it saves me some clicks for if I want to have um, multiple columns and um, if I need to add sections ad hoc. So you can start with this and just rock with it. But if you wanted to add a section ad hoc, um, then you can do so by saying, you know, task six complete readings i'll set it to navy i'm going to set it to be collapsible start collapse and i want to be the two columns um the leftmost column i want it to be doubled with and then the right column to be uh, more narrow so i'll press add layout and that will add that to the bottom of my page so that's the one i really use the most often for myself just because um, typically, I'm not starting from scratch. Sometimes I am, but usually I'm copying a page from one section to the next, which leads me to my next little, I think it's a tip. <laughs> I kind of distinguish between tips and tricks. Um, the next tip I have is uh, starting with a template, if you can, um, so that you're copying your template from um, page to page within a given course. And that's going to save you time and going back and forth to making to make sure that you're consistent between the words you use, the styling you use. Um, it's going to save you a lot of clicks in terms of adding just the basic uh, structure of your content. So for example, um, this is a, a demo course that I, I helped an instructor build a couple years ago. Um, and what I did was I basically started with module one. That's the right place to start, right? And after looking at her content, this is the framework we decided on. We wanted to have uh, an overview. We want to have our learning outcomes here on the left. We want to have two checklists, checklists on the right. And then we would have task sections. 
very simple. They're all gold and they all start in that closed position and students expand and collapse as needed. Now, when you start a new lessons page, obviously it's blank. And one thing I'm always running into um, is that faculty don't know that you can copy items from one page to another. And so again, this might be, if you do know this, and this is just repetition, um, but I like to start, or I like to create maybe even a template if I if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of copying of that same framework or that structure. So I make a hidden subpage that's only visible to instructors and I copy in all that that framework. So to do to create that copy, let me just start a new subpage here. I'll click on this little guy template two is what I'll call it. And I will go into template two. And I will say, add items from another page. I think this gets overlooked a lot. It might be called something different in base Sakai, but it's it's there. That functionality is there. And for me, this takes a while to load. Um, so I'm going to let that hang out for a minute. But um, basically what I do is now that I've got my module one all set up and beautiful, I want to copy that same framework into this template page that I'm creating. You don't always have to create a template page. You can also just copy it from page to page. But Let's just do this template thing since that's what I'm talking about. So I want to copy module one and I click on this little button here and then um, to, to just say that's the one I want to, that's the page I want to copy. And I scroll down, I say use selected item and it makes a copy. This is the reorder page. So it's going to show me just an outline of everything that's going to copy over. And I usually just leave this alone. I say, yep, that looks good. That's, I know that's what's being copied. I can come back later and make changes on this page if I want to. So then I'll hit save. And now I have that all copied. And it's so it's very confusing right now for folks who um, aren't accustomed to this. You're like, did it actually make a copy? Or did it, am I just linking somehow back to that module one? It is an actual copy. So it says template two, but it, lo it, it looks exactly the same. So I like to just go, I mean, even, even sometimes I'll still test myself just to make sure that it is making an actual copy. So I'll change one thing. I'll say, you know, this is just template, <laughs> template overview. And the problem with making a template is then you do have to remember to go through and change all these things. Um, so I would actually probably call that a module X overview. And then I know anytime I see an X, I have to change that out. Um, but then I would go through and delete my overview text here. And then, you know, maybe put a couple X's there to remind myself that I have to do that. You could style it in red. You could style it with big yellow highlights to remind yourself you have to change it. Um, any kind of visual triggers that you need to remind yourself that you need to change <laughs> from module one to module two, you need to make that that change. Um, but so sometimes I like to even just go back to my first module, like, am I actually making changes to the first module? But no, it's made an actual copy so I can safely be editing, um, just verifying, you know, here, my module one's still there, everything's still preserved, it made an actual copy. So I can just copy that from one page to the next. So you can start with that template or you can, uh, like I said, if you, I only had six modules in this course. So really what I did was just, I always just created a, a new sub page and ju then just copied module one. I didn't actually make a template, but sometimes I would if it was a course with 16 modules um, just for this, for ease. So that is another tip that I have. Um, if you need to copy this, you really like this framework that you've delivered or, or that you've created and you want to copy it in between sites. So let's say you're te teaching two sections of a site or you're teaching similar content between um, two sites. You can also add items from another site. I think that's something that's it's newer to Sakai. So uh, what I do then is I click on add items from another page and I wait for it to load. In the video, little asynchronous videos I made, I, I cut this part out because it takes it does take a while to load. It's probably faster for most folks, but for me, it's I think it's loading essentially every single lessons tool and all the pages I had. So um, hopefully it's faster for you. So let's say that I know that I want to copy in something from my EDT 467 course. I know that's a course that's similar content. So then I'll click on that course and I'll say load pages from this site. And now again, this might take a minute. Um, it will load the, the lessons pages from that course that I can now copy forward into this course. There's differing philosophies on whether it's better to just manually copy 
uh, text block by text block or assignment by assignment. But sometimes it is useful to just know how to do this in case you know that, oh, I know my module two in this course is exactly the same as my module two in this other class. So I'm just going to copy that and say, um, I'll, I'll click on the button next to module two. I'll say use selected item. And then what it shows me here is an outline of what's existing on the page. So this is the original content I have on that page. And then down here in the yellow is all the new stuff that's coming in. And again, I don't ever mess around on this page for the first time. I just let it all copy over. I want to make sure it's copied and then I will start tweaking and deleting from there. And uh, that's a great question about does the course lesson item copy include all page co content or just certain elements? So if it's in the same course, I believe it copies everything, um, including assignments, tests, and quizzes. I believe it will copy everything. If you're copying in between sites, so two different Isidore or Sakai sites, I it will not copy your resources, your assignments, your forums. So you will have to go back and relink those. Um, otherwise, you could just do an import. Import will kind of bring over lots more stuff. But if you're just trying to get the content in there, then this is a path forward for that. Do LT, no, the LTI links from site to site, those won't come over. Within the course, though, if you're copying just within a course, I believe an LTI link would still work, but I would have to actually double check that, to, to be honest. Um, but definitely not in between courses. I know that much. In between courses, you're going to have to do a lot of like checking. So I like to do a color scheme for my classes. So this is the gold class, right? And then the teal class was the class I copied from. So I'm like, oh, that's different. I know that that's a different course. So I would say, okay, I don't need this. Um, I really would like, let's say I just really wanted the task two and task three from this. I could expand it and then I could look through it. Uh, the links to external resources will, will work, but, and that's a public resource. Um, I'm trying to see this, this link won't work. So it's telling me that's an error. So you will have to go back and relink those resources. Um, so that, that again, that's why there's differing philosophies as to whether or not it's better to just manually migrate things or if it's better to do this operation from one site to another, um, it really comes down to what you think is best and how well you know your course and what you're copying from one course to another. So again, double check everything with that with that little tip. But I just want to point that out so, so people are aware of it because I think it's often overlooked. <clears throat> the next trick I hope is um, the most engaging one because it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite things to do. So uh, if anyone who knows me knows I love the templates in lessons. Um, so this is an example of a template. This is uh, this instructor that I had worked with. She's amazing. She's fantastic. Um, and she supplies so much good content. That's that's the hardest part of working with faculty sometimes is bring, let me hear, let me just type your story out or tell me your story. I'll type it out. Give me something that I can put into the page. And she will do that with flying colors. So she had a story to tell. And I was like, let's put this into a template. Most folks are aware of the templates that are available in the Rich Text Editor. But sometimes you want to customize them. So let me just show you a little bit of some some silly ways that you can customize because it seems like, okay, I'll just upload a picture of myself and tell a story. But you can get so much more creative with that. So here I have a very aptly named Silly Convo. So we're pretending like we're in a different course now. This is um, not no longer a teacher education course. This is a, a, maybe an aerospace engineering course, right? Um, you can do a little conversation. You could you could do this as many times with as many characters as you want. Um, I've seen people do this with like instructor student, like pretend student conversation when you're giving them a hard assignment, you know, having them ask a question or, you know, be frustrated with the assignment and then the instructor kind of responds, well, it's for your own benefit. That's why you're doing this. And you can be really fun and creative with this. So this is just a silly conversation between a space shuttle and a capsule. I could have gone on forever with this, but I decided to stop. Um, but you'll notice that I'm no longer using that green. I'm using this navy blue. So the picture, that's easy enough to understand how to change out. But the colors I find are very challenging. Um, I Because I, I like this color green, but sometimes the default templates of the, the default colors on the templates, I, I highly dislike. They're fine for in some cases, but sometimes I just want to change the color. So I'll show you how to do that. And here's where I am going to show code. That's why there's an asynchronous video you can go back and watch where I do, you can spend more time looking at it. Um, but I'm just going to show how to do it. So I'll click, I'll get started by adding a new text item. All the templates are available in the text editor. And by the way, not just in lessons, you can use the templates in any place you have that rich text editor. For us, it's in the top right hand corner. So I'm going to click on templates. 
which pulls up the template library. And I'm going to do that instructor insight conversation. That's essentially what the space shuttle was doing. So I'll click on that. And this green is really, this green is fine. I just like to change colors, especially since the green would clash with the color of the space shuttle. Let me grab a link to the space shuttle real quick, uh, to, to the image of the space shuttle. You can download, if you weren't aware, you could download pictures and paste those in there, or you can just get a uh, uh, link address. Ah, okay, so I'll just double click on the picture and I'll paste in a link to a website. So my green clashes with my blue. It's just horrible. I hate that, I hate the clash. To me, it clashes. I actually don't know anything about color theory, so maybe it doesn't clash. I'll click on source. So again, scary code, right? There's a lot too. When we use these templates, it does add a lot of code to what is otherwise an empty text item. And so it does get, you have to kind of get used to practicing with this to start to learn what the code actually means. But I'm just gonna scroll down. I know that all this stuff is not stuff I care about right now. All this stuff that's indented far, I don't care about it. So I'm looking for, okay. And this is also the scary code of the image. So it copied an image code. So disregard that. But down here, I'll just put some space in between there. Here's the, here, what you can also do is like do a control F search for whatever text you've written into that green block. So if I say space shuttle, I can go into source, I can do control F and say shuttle. And now down here, this is what I'm looking for. This is the code I'm looking for. So I can see that it says Sakai colorize dash dash Sakai color green. Okay, so I don't like green for, for this. Let's do, let's go with blue. Let's see what happens. So I change it to blue. I'm going to go up and I'm going to toggle off the source. The source is just a toggle. You can toggle it back and forth. And now miraculously I've got blue. I like it, but I saw more things in there that I want to play with. So I'm going to click on source again and I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to add these spaces just from, just so we can separate the image out. Okay. So the else is lighter. I wonder what would happen if we change it to darker. Let's go back, turn off source, and now we have a darker blue. Okay, I also noticed that there were some colors or some, some numbers, not colors. It says darker four. What if I turn it to darker six? What happens? We have a darker color. So you can play around with these a lot and you're you're probably wondering like, well, how do I know what will what colors will work? What's, I mean, can you choose, instead of darker and lighter, can you choose like extra dark or something? No, so these are, I think, I, again, I'm not a programmer by any means. I think these are classes that are built into the framework of Sakai that I'm just pulling from. And I can show you how to pull those colors. Also, though, I have pulled them and put them into that tips and tricks document. So down here, um, where did I put that? Here. I did pull a screenshot, and this is this is not accessible, um, so I apologize. Um, but you can, or it's not accessible in terms of accessibility. You can visually see the list of colors here, but you can't highlight anything and copy out these codes. But it says Sakai color blue lighter four. So these are all the ones that are available in the library of Sakai. I just pulled this essentially from um, from like the source. I can show you. Let me let me show it. Uh, which one was I working in? So if I save this, I'll show you how to pull this in case you want to pull it for yourself. Um, but it can be tricky depending on your browser, depending on lots of different things. Um, but if I right click on this and say inspect, all browsers have this ability to inspect. And again, it pulls up just a lot of code. And here you can play around with it too. You don't have to go into it. You can I can just say, I want this to be purple. And this shows you a preview of what it will look like, which is a really nice thing. So really don't like that purple darker. Let's change it to purple three. Let's see, that's a different color. That's terrible actually for this. <laughs> um, but you can also see all the colors available in the library. Let me pull this up. I can't pull it up. I don't know why it's not letting me. I want to pull this up so I can expand it. I don't know why I'm not able to do that. Ah, there we go. Okay, so over here in this right-hand panel, if I start scrolling down, and whenever you start to see lists of colors, that's when you know you're kind of in the right spot. Um, I believe if I change out from brand, you know, the word color and I put brand in there, I could pull in these colors. Um, really all I did was I just, I, I in that screenshot, I did all of the um, lessons colors. So the ones that are available in lessons. Um, let me, where's that? 
so this screenshot here, it says Sakai Lessons Navy, which is one of my favorite colors. So whereas the word color is here, the word lessons is here, but I really like to use that Navy. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change it out to be Navy rather than the purple or the orange or the um, blue. I want to use that Navy. So I'm going to scroll down. So rather than the word color, the word was lessons. So I'll change that. Now, if I were to just toggle this off, it would, it would break. The color would be gone. So it's gone now. That's because we've changed, I think, the class or something. So because blue is within the color library, not the lessons library. So Navy is within the <laughs> is within the lessons library. So I'm going to choose Navy. I want to choose maybe light. I want to change it from darker to lighter. Let's choose number five. I really like that color. It still clashes. I haven't found my match, but I can now use the Navy library so I can change. I can see if maybe lighter two is closer. I don't know. It's probably still going to, oh, it's getting closer. I really like that actually. So I'll save that. And that's how you can pull in different colors for your templates. Um, so yes, I would just, I would, you know, that file with the list of colors, feel free to pull that, save it on your computer. You should, this should be the same for the most part between different instances of Sakai. So my colors in Sakai are, should be the same as yours. The one exception is I don't know about the Rudy colors over here because Rudy is a reference to Rudy Flyer, the University of Dayton mascot. It's a custom one we did. So I'm not 100% sure that that one's available in all instances of Sakai, but the rest of these should be. All right. Um, so that is how to customize uh, the colors of the templates. I can also go into how to customize um, icons on the template. So for some examples here, um, you know, the template, there's a standard template that has a, it's gold and it has a star. That's a good starting point, but I would want to use something other than a star sometimes. So here I've used a calendar icon um, down here. I believe I used a thumbtack icon. I changed it to light purple. So for us, and I think for other some other schools, maybe not all schools, but we have um, a font awesome plugin in the rich text editor. So I'm going to click on this plus icon just to get myself started with a new text item. And I'll click on templates and I will say, I want to start with this alert. So that's that star. I, and I just sometimes I, it's fine, but sometimes I don't want to use it. So I, we have this really nice plugin called font awesome. I think we paid a relatively small fee for it. Um, but I can't say that for sure that it's in all uh, instances of Sakai. But here I have this nice icon library. So let's say I wanted to do um, arrow for some reason. So I'll click on this arrow. Oops. Did I not? I, oh, okay. Got press OK. Um, so that's the one, that's the arrow I want. But how can I put it over here? And how can I get rid of this star? Because sometimes these are a little bit funny to uh, get rid of. Thank you, uh, Dr. Chuck. Font Awesome is probably everywhere. So that's great. But I want to get rid of the star and I can't get my cursor in here. I don't know if that's the case for other folks, but these icons, once they're in there, they're kind of hard to manipulate in the actual UI. So again, I'm going to show scary code. We're going to go to source. And thankfully, it's a little bit cleaner source area than that shuttle picture we were working with that was junking up a lot of stuff. Um, but I know that this icon is called star. So again, I can kind of do a control F. If I can't, if I can't visually see it, I can do a control F and it's highlighted star and this F a here, that means font awesome. And so again, that's the class, the library that's being called, but what do, what, what's my arrow called? I don't know, but that's why I added it from that font awesome library so that I can look for it at the end of my sentence. I can say, oh, I added something called arrow circle, right? That's the arrow I just added. And then over here I see F a font awesome. So let me see if I can just copy this and remove star and put that in here. Let's see what happens. And now I have an arrow or no, I don't. That's the original arrow I'd put in there. Oh, I have two main dashes. Let me delete that dash. Now I've got the arrow that I want because that's one I just I had copied and pasted. So now I have this arrow. Let's say I want to change the size of it because sometimes the size, I felt like the star is a little bit large. I, I this is silly, but I aim to have my icons to be roughly the same size as my font size, sometimes a little bit bigger. 
but not too much bigger. To me, this is like an aggressively large arrow. And again, this is just my own special qualities of myself that I can't let go for some reason. So I'll go to source and I like, it's too big. So I want to change the size. This, it says font size, but it's not changing this font size. It's actually going to be changing the size of this arrow. So I'm going to change it down to 16 and that might be too small, but that's getting closer. Actually, I really like that. Um, and then I also don't like the space. So this is again for just the people who are like me and they don't like too much. They like spacing, but not too much spacing. I can't backspace here. It's going to do weird indentations. I don't know why, but that's what happens. So again, I go into source and there's a margin left. That's what's causing this to be indented so far. This margin left here on this text. So I'm just going to take 10 pixels off. So I'm going to say 25 pixels. And now I'm much closer to the amount of spacing I want on this template. Aggressive errors, yes. To me, it was aggressively large. It's like, look at me. So I wanted to just take it down a little bit. Sometimes there's a time and a place for an aggressively large icon, but sometimes you just want it to be a muted icon. Um, okay, so that is the templates. I know I'm running out of time here. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is copying source code. Again, many folks might be aware of how to copy source code, but um, as someone who has to copy, and here's the use case, I was working on a course and every single time I was, um, actually it's this one I want to be in, every single time I was trying to remember exactly the framework of the instructions I'd written from module to module. So let's see if I have an example in here. Uh... Submit. Okay. So yeah. So I have, I wanted to have a purpose, a value, and my submission guidelines and the instructions. I wanted to have an end date. It, it, there's two parts for most of these assignments in this course. So I wanted to have a part one and a part two. I want them to be different colors. I want them to be indented. And I was forever not remembering from page to page if I'd use the word instructions here, or if I'd use the word guidelines here, if I'd indented, which color of purple did I choose? Which color of orange? Did I bold this? Did I not bold it? So I couldn't remember. And as and I decided, let me just copy the source code. So that way I'm always going to get the same formatting every single time. So I'll click on this little pencil icon. And I'm going to go to source. And I'm going to do control A to select everything and then control C. And that's all we're doing right now. That's all we're doing. I just cancel out of that. I've got my source. The thing I like to do then is I like to open up a new notepad file. So I use this funny little app called Notepad++. It lets me have multiple text files open all at once, which is really, really useful. I'm sure people have much better ways of doing this, but this is the hacky way in which I do it. I paste in that code. I drag it over to my other monitor. And then for my next module, let's say in module 13, I need to copy that kind of same framework for those instructions. I'll go to module 13 and I have a new spot where I want to add some instructions. We'll pretend it's here. I can just paste that code in. So I went to source. So now I'm in the source view. I paste it in and it's copied my icon. It's copied my bolding. It's copied the um, heading tag on this. Um, it's copied my part, my colors exactly right. So now I can change this to be discuss um, dietary restriction, something like that. I'm not going to type that correctly. And I don't have to remember what words I use or did not use. And so copying the source code, I think, is probably one of the most valuable things you can learn how to do. And it's the thing I use probably the most. So that's my trickiest of tricks. It's not that good of a trick, really, but it will save you time if you don't do it, um, if you haven't done it before. Once you get in the habit of copying source code, it's always, it's always, and one thing I also like to do with source code is especially if I've been working really hard on something and I've put so much time into the way it looks and the formatting and I know it's perfect, but I'm also, I've been on the page a long time and I'm not sure if I've opened up Sakai in too many tabs or if I've accidentally been really disconnected from the internet. If I'm just afraid I'm going to lose my content that I've spent so much time on, I will click on source and I'll copy the code because if I hit save and I've lost everything, yes, there's an auto save, but just in case I want everything I got. So I, I do get in the habit of even just pressing that, copying that source code out all the time, just all the time. If there's anything I want to save, I just do it just in case. You never know. All right. So I think you, Wilma, we can go on a little bit if we want to. Um, those are 
really the most main things I wanted to hit. I do have a few other things in that document. Um, customizing templates. I'm for another page. Oh, bulk edit page titles. That one's an easy one. So I'll just show that really fast. Um, although I didn't, I thought this was saved or I thought this was shared into the um, base instance of Sakai, but then I didn't see it. Um, but I will just quickly go over it just in case um, some folks have it. But if you need to bulk edit your page titles, so this says module one, module two, module three, but if I wanted to call it the science and nutrition, obviously I'd want to like copy these into a Word document or something so I could have it open while I did this. Um, but if I want to change the titles on these pages, you can edit the titles on this bulk edit sub pages all in one spot versus having to edit each individual page title. So if I really want to call this module one, science and nutrition, module two, sugars and proteins, not a nutritionist, um, you can change them all in one location, which is really helpful. And um, this this module, it didn't really matter to do that. I don't, I don't need it for this course since we have the description of the pages up here, but we do have a lot of courses where we have the lessons tool, um, where's a good example? The lessons tool is set to expand on the left-hand page. And I know that in the new uh, portal, maybe this isn't ha maybe this isn't an option anymore, but um, we have a lot of instructors saying like just week one, week two, week three, week four, and they don't put the subjects on the pages. And so students, you know, it's week 11. And you're like, where did we talk about stars? I don't remember what week that is. So having that page, the subject, just a short, <laughs> a condensed version of the title as you can, adding that to the bulk edit or to the to the page title can be helpful. Um, yeah, that it. I looked in uh, as for the bulk edit sub pages. It was shared back, and it was looked like it was supposed to be in twenty three dot x is what I saw in Jira, but then I didn't see it anywhere. So um, I can I had the ticket open earlier. I can pull it, and I don't know what needs to happen for it to be in in base Sakai. Um, oh, well, it's, it's in, okay. Let me pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I here, I just had it open. And of course my, I closed it because I was trying to get my place all cleaned up before I presented. Sakai, Jira. Oh, it's, now we're going to see me not know where I'm clicking because I'm not in um, Jira quite enough to know what I'm doing here. Bulk edit. And here, this is the ticket. And, it, and again, I don't know what verified and done and fixed. I don't know what all those words mean, but it was supposed to be there in 23X, I think. So I will leave that to the, the fixed version. Dr. Chuck, where's the fixed version? It's over here. Oh boy. Fix, fix version. Let me see if I can fix. Or, fix version 23. That's what it says. Oh, 21.0. Okay. Well, I will let. <laughs> this is the side of uh, Sakai that I'm much less familiar with. So I will end it there. I will open it up for questions. Um, hopefully, the bulk editing pages, hopefully, that can get in someplace. Um, but I will leave it open for questions now. I'll stop sharing. Is the font awesome the same as the CK? I believe that would be the same thing. Is font awesome the same as CK awesome? I believe that's the same. Sharing a trick. Cindy says, when you have a lessons page in the tool menu on the left, it has sub pages. Yes, enable the lesson sub page navigation. Actually, I can share that real quick because that is a really good trick. Um, so I'll go back to sharing. So. This is, I think, what uh, Cindy is talking about um, is the lesson subpage navigation. Again, I don't know how this works in the new portal. I haven't played around with it enough, um, but this is definitely a feature people really like to have the ability to expand and collapse this. Um, to enable that, you go to site info, and then we call, in our version, we call um, manage tools, add remove tools, and this this is the reordering tools. So disregard, but you basically go to manage tools if you haven't renamed it. And here on the right, you can say enable less lessons sub page navigation, and that will allow lessons pages to expand and collapse.
okay, Dr. Chucks is saying that maybe Font Awesome is not available. In that case, the backup plan, though, if you don't have fonts, Font Awesome is in this. Ah, here's the font link to the Font Awesome icon library. And then what I like to do is go to the icon, or you can search. So let's just say I want to search for a picture of the laptop. I like to go to the free icons and then you can download the icon and then upload it as an image. And it's a little bit less good, especially if you want to make it transparent, that can make it look really nice. Um, but you have to know how to make things transparent because by default, it won't let you download as a transparent image. Um, but that is a small workaround. It will take you extra time though. So I do apologize for that. Can you add a custom classification to that color library and add in brand colors? I think that you can. I believe we did when we branded Sakai um, because in that library of colors, there were some that were specifically listed as brand. So if I scroll down, color gold, color gold, lessons. I don't know. I saw, I definitely saw some that were brand. I don't know why. Like, I think this navy up here for us is a brand color. So maybe if I do, if I highlight on that. So I believe you can. I don't know how to do that, though. That is something that is, um, you could, I don't know if you can talk to your development team or to Longsight if you're working with them. Um, that would be the, the folks to ask, because I don't know how to change that myself. <laughs> Theme color. I know that we have some custom brand colors in here, though. I'm just not seeing them in this list, but I saw them earlier. So, okay, we should probably wrap up so that we don't get too far behind for our lightning talks. So, um, thank you so much, Julian. You always show us the coolest stuff. So, I know I definitely picked up a few tips that I didn't know. Um, I hope all of you guys did as well. And I'm going to go look for that bulk edit because I don't see it on our um, 23 on Tri Sakai. So I'm wondering if it's maybe something you have to turn on with a property or something. That could but, be it. Um, but that's very cool. So thank you again. Um, and uh, please refer to the document that, that Julianne made available to everyone um, for, for more information on all the stuff that she showed you today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this room so we can pop over to the lightning rounds, round two um and give folks a minute or two to get situated in there so i will see you over there thanks again thank you